All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to say, call hello, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We are Sakari Phoenix. We come out here week in and week out to teach our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, their true identity according to the Bible, and that is that they are of the nation of Israel of the various 12 tribes. And we also come out to teach our people that our responsibility as Israelites to keep the law statute of God forever. Okay? Give me what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. I've been all over this country. I talk to a lot of people. Most of them claim to be in Christ, right? Read on. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Hold on, what are you reading? 6 and 17? Second Corinthians chapter six verse seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them. So, in Paul's epistle to the Corinthians, he says, "Come out from among them." From who? And and be ye separate, saith ye the Lord. So the Lord said to the blacks, Hispanics, and native native Indians. God's chosen people, he told his chosen people to be separate. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So he said, if you don't touch the unclean thing, he will receive you. What is the unclean thing? Anything that pertains to the heathens. Anything that he said not to deal with. Eating unclean foods. That's right. Like swine, which is pork. Or lobster, crab. Unclean things like idols. Your Christmas tree. That was an idol. That's right. All right. Eating food sacrificed unto idols. Your Thanksgiving dinner. Touch not the unclean thing and he will receive you. Keep reading. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So the Heavenly Father said he will be a father unto us, and we will be his sons and daughters. If we do what? If we be separate from all these other nations and touch not the unclean thing. You see, we up here have no desire to eat your holiday foods. We up here have no desire to make your daughters our wives. Black, Hispanic, and Native American women are the greatest women on the, on the face of the earth. And not a white woman, not an East Indian woman. No other woman can compare to that. Our high holy days are set apart and holy. Your holidays include everybody. There's nothing holy about it. Nothing separate about it. Right? Give me Jeremiah... Uh, Galatians. This is Jeremiah chapter ten, verse two. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. So thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. That's a definitive statement and a broad statement. Whatever the way of the heathen is, we're not to learn it. We're not to do after it. We're not to go after it. So all your gay pride parades, we don't want to come. All right? Your Sunday mass, we ain't, we ain't coming to that neither. Your fourth wedding, 
with your little with your little children as the you know flower girl and all that stuff. We 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 not with it, man. We not learning y'all ways. And here's an example of one of the ways of the healing among many. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the custom of the people are vain. So the custom of the people are vain. We're going to read about a vain custom that the majority of you just partook in this last week. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. December 25th. Many of you know it is Christmas. What do you all do? Tell me something. What, what is, when did Christ been raised? October. Christ was born in around springtime, not wintertime. So, October. for for Christ, well, no, not October, brother. Not October. More like was, more like February and March. God was made in October. No, nah, brother. He was born more around spring. But let's let's let the Bible speak. So, what they do is they go into the forest and they cut out a tree. Right? We do the the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So you cut out you cut out a tree from the forest with the axe, right? Go ahead. They deck it with silver and with gold. So when you get this pine tree that you've cut out of the forest with an axe, you bring it to your house and you decorate it. You deck it with silver and gold, do you not? Well this is a vain custom of the people that the most high God is saying we are not to partake in. And yet Year after year, Christians everywhere decorate their Christmas trees and say that it's for Jesus. Keep reading. They fasten it with the nails and with hammers that it move not. So they put it in a tree holder. You go buy, you go pick out your tree. You get it. You get it home. You put it in a little tree holder. You screw the nails in, or you hammer them in. However yours works so that the tree can stay upright. You deck it with silver and gold and sing songs like Deck the House, right? You know. They are upright as the palm tree. So the, the, the uh, tree holder holds it upright, right? You can drop that. So this, this is an example of one of the things that we are not supposed to do, and yet churches everywhere promote this with this very Bible that my brother was just reading from all up in there. Do you think they ever go to Jeremiah chapter 10? I never heard it. This is Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. So the Most High God said he has severed us from other people. That we would be a holy people. What does the word holy mean? It comes from the Hebrew word kodash, which means separate. So if you are not separate, you are by definition unholy. If you're doing what everybody else is doing, if you're following after the masses and not following after what the Lord thy God has said, then nothing holy about it. The chief example of the most unholy thing is the Catholic Church. Right. It's the exact opposite of what it means to be holy. Catholic means universal. Their idea was they were going to take the Bible and incorporate everybody else's traditions and customs and stories and tales into what already existed on its own, separate of all those things. Which is why these different churches push that we're supposed to celebrate Christmas, which was a pagan holiday that we just read about in Jeremiah the Old Testament, long before Christ was born, showing that this has nothing to do with the Messiah's birth. But they took that festival and applied it to celebrating Christ, when Christ himself said that we were supposed to be separate. When he came speaking the Father's words, and the Father said we were supposed to be separate. But they want to be all-inclusive, which is anti-biblical and anti-Christ.
you know, something something happened pretty recently, the last couple of days, that affected Arizona as well as many other states across the country that a lot of people might not be aware of. For the last two days or so, 911 hasn't been working. So, if you were a victim of a robbery, or somebody tried to kill you, or somebody tried to rape you, or somebody tried to kidnap your child, or whatever might have happened that would compel you to call the police for help, 911 in states across this country has been down. Let's read about it. The FCC investigates widespread CenturyLink outage that disrupted 911 service. So this widespread CenturyLink outage has disrupted 911 service. And the interesting thing about this is, Israelites have been coming out every week on the streets to preach the downfall of this society since before I was born. And we're gonna keep on doing it until the kingdom comes. Whether I make it that far or not remains to be seen, but it don't matter because this is going to keep going. Right. And one thing that we've been saying consistently over these decades is that one day you're going to reach out to that white man that you love so much and that government that you trust in so much that you turned your back on God for and they're not going to answer your call. That's right. We've been saying this for years. And here it is. And here it is. 911 across the country has been down. What are you going to do when you put your trust in something and it fails you? If you had just put your faith in the Most High God, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he would never have forsaken you. The white man will turn his back on you every time. And it's, and it's kind of a blessing. It's kind of a blessing because I've been hearing a lot of stories and news reports of brothers and sisters calling 911 for perfectly legitimate reasons. The police show up and victimize the one who called. And this seems to happen most often to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I haven't heard about it happen to a cracker yet. That's right. Because it wasn't set up for us. It was never made for us. The original police badges had slave catcher inscribed on them. That was their main purpose. We run off from the plantation, they find us, catch us, bring us back. To this day, the new plantation, the penitentiary system, 13th Amendment, they abolished slavery unless a crime was committed. And what do they do? They build laws around what they see us doing to criminalize what they see us doing. So while white people were dealing with powdered cocaine and black people were dealing with crack cocaine or freebase before it, they criminalized the crack cocaine far more than the uh, powdered stuff. So they catch you with powder, they give you a life sentence. They catch you with that rock, you get in 10 or more. And that's 10 years of slavery for you. And who brings you into it? them same damn slave catchers the horse the the rider on the horse this is lamentations chapter 4 verse 18 i'll start at 17 as for us our eyes have yet as yet failed for our vain help so our eyes have yet failed for our vain help You reach out to these people in vain. They're not going to help you. And your eyes will fail. You put your trust in them. Go on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. In our watching, we have watched for a nation who could not save us, who will not save us. It's not even in his best interest. First of all, we have to be saved from them. We can't look to our oppressor. We can't look to our slave master. We can't look to the person whose foot is on our neck to save us from their foot being on our neck. That's right. If they wanted what was best for us, their foot wouldn't be on our neck in the first place. That's right. They would never have taken us on their slave ships and put us to work for 400 years. They would have never taken my Native American brothers on slave ships to Europe to work over there. 
We cannot trust these people. And if you trust them, you are a goddamn fool. Plain and simple. We don't. Verse 18. They hunt our steps. They hunt our steps. Everywhere we go, there they are lurking. There they are waiting. Now, I've been to black neighborhoods. I've been to white neighborhoods. I don't see no kind of police presence in the white neighborhoods at the, at anywhere near the same degree as I do in my old neighborhood or any other hood I've been to. They be planted around everywhere. And they like to say, oh, you know, you guys commit crimes at a disproportional rate. No, you're just watching our every step. I've been in white neighborhoods. I've seen the crimes y'all commit. And look, y'all be raping, selling prescription drugs, abusing prescription drugs, torturing animals, raping animals. I don't see y'all filling up the jails for it. They say, oh, boys will be boys. True, personally, when I was a teenager, I got jumped by a gang of skinheads. Me and one of my friends. The police showed up, looked at me and my one friend, saw there's some 20 skinheads, looked at us and said, you guys must be the gang. What is this? What gang are you a part of? You mean to tell me all those white boys that look the same with the same haircut and the same tattoos and the same clothes, that's not the gang. But me and my friend here who just got jumped by them is the gang. All right, I got you. Go ahead. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. That we cannot go in our streets. What's, what's something that's common in our neighborhoods? Gang injunctions. They see two, three, four brothers hanging out in one place for too long. It don't matter if you if you a gang or not. They come and round you up, take you to jail, depending on what neighborhood you're in, what city you're in. Or at least, at the very least, break it up and, and tell y'all to leave. If you don't leave, then they'll take you for being uh, disobedient to them. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. For our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. Now, what nation on this earth consistently identifies with the eagle? The United States of America. Evil. And what was that? Hey, man, I hope you're not abusing that dog, man. I know how y'all people do. Y'all been doing it since y'all was in the caves, man. Let the beast go. Bring it out. That poor thing just want to live, man. That is not your girlfriend. The United States of America with the bald eagle. Germany, eagle. England, France, Rome, Greece, eagle. Eagle, eagle eagle. This is talking about the white man. The white man hunts our steps. The white man is in our streets, keeping us out of them. Taking us into prison, matter of fact. This is Psalm chapter 10, verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His, his eyes are privily set against the poor. So his eyes are privily set against the poor. He's always watching the poor, the downtrodden, who are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. As a matter of fact, I myself as a Levite will say this, Haiti is the poorest nation in the world. So there's no question as to who the poor is. That's our people. That's right. That's the Israelites. The so-called Jewish man, the richest group of people on earth, don't fit not one single prophecy, not one single description. No history, no prophecy at all. And let's see who this is, what the Bible calls who these people are. Revelations, chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So the Most High God says, fear none of these things which we shall suffer. Read on. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Who shall cast us into prison? 
the devil shall cast some of you into prison. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Right. Now I live by what I see. God gave me eyes and I use them. And I have never seen any cartoonish, red pajama wearing, two horn having, pitchfork carrying, tailed imp running around locking people up in prisons. What do I see? I see them boys in blue. That's right. That white man with the badge. Uh. And that Sambo coon that followed him. The devil will cast some of you into prison. And there is no question as to who the devil is according to the Bible. And that is the so-called white man. That's right. Who the most high God named Edom or Esau. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So the Bible says never trust thine enemy. It didn't say trust him sometimes. It didn't say trust the one that you grew up with because he kind of cool, he all right. It didn't say trust the one that lent you his bike when you was a kid or lent you $20 when you was an adult. It says, never trust thine enemy. Who is the enemy of the black, Hispanic, and Native Indian man? Everybody that is not black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. Chief of, chief of all, the so-called white man. How are you guys doing today? They said they believe in the Bible. You guys believe in the Bible? What were you listening to on NPR? How, how, how does that, well, well, let me ask you, what's your uh, ethnicity? You don't want to talk about it? Uh, no problem. Irish American. Irish American, all right, all right. How, how does, um, how does the history of, uh, of, of the interaction between our people make you feel? I think that's more It hurts your heart? You feel sorrowful about it? That's good. I'm glad you I'm glad you're not. Okay. What which one did you point to? You said this picture here? Okay, with the cartoon of us, you know. I never find the source to what? You're never gonna find the source to what caused this. Like what exactly it was all the training that happened in America that's still going on today. That means that
do you, do you think that while Obama was president, that hatred was just gone in this country? No. Okay. I think progress was starting. And hatred is an underlying motive that will never, ever end. I, I agree. In a, in a melting pot of a country like ourselves, I'm sorry, my name is Mike. Nice to meet you. I saw. Nice, nice to meet you. Um, I think that that melting pot uh, should have explained a lot of things that weren't being explained. Michael, hold on one second. I'll be right in. Okay. Um, do, do, you, do you think that it's possible that Trump being where he is today is a direct result of how a certain demographic felt about Obama being in that position? No. You don't? I think that Trump is highlighting a sect of America that's already been there. And that sect of America had no voice, and that voice is hatred. And that hatred voice needs to stop, but we can't stop that voice without attention. And I think complacency is the problem. We've been complacent as Americans, and we've allowed this to happen. Everybody was happy when we had Barack. Everyone was said, oh, okay, you know, change. Change, change, change. So then all of a sudden, we're so used to change and everything being great, we get this douchebag in office and he's allowing this system to take the lowest medium bottom denominator of white supremacists and evil bigots and uh, misogynists and uh, people that are against gay rights and uh, all kinds of rights for free Americans to be unjustly forced into this creed of this And we'll be able to change that if we get him wrong. Cool, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you tell my brother over there that you believe in the Bible? Of course I do. So you're for gay rights? I am for the freedom of people. I am for anyone that believes to be free to be free, and it's not my choice to do whatever Jesus believes is their fact. So if Jesus wants to judge them in the kingdom of God, that's their choice. But it's not my choice to say Well, that's undisputable. Of course they're going to be judged in the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about going out and killing gays or anything like that. What I'm talking about is affording them rights to do certain things that encourage and enable that behavior that didn't previously, like those laws didn't previously exist. Those laws came in with Obama, right? Because before Obama, we had uh, W. Bush, right? But before him, we had Clinton. Right. Okay. So none of those laws existed with them. It was when Obama came in that he implemented these things, and you brought up that point as a point against Trump. When if Trump is, and actually I haven't heard him speak on it. I don't know if he's for gay rights or not. But let's just assume he's not. Um, if he's not, then at least in that aspect, what he's saying is more in line with the Bible that you said you believe in than what Obama actually implemented, let alone just set. So, in the shape of the Lord and Savior, when we're allowed to believe in the Lord in our hearts, um, they will be judged by their maker, and that's the truth. But I don't know that hurts hurts us, you know, whether we believe in the Lord, which we do, um, that we're allowed to judge yeah. Well, like I said, I'm not talking about implementing judgment. Well, okay, let's let's imagine a courtroom, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's a judge and there's a jury, a defendant and a plaintiff, right? right? So if I am the plaintiff and I'm accusing a gay man of committing the crime of being a homosexual, right? Or the sin, right? It's not a crime in this country. The jurors 
determine whether or not this person is in fact guilty but they don't deal out judgment they're just saying guilty or not guilty the judge who in this analogy would be our creator right the judge is the one that doles out the punishment of course at the end of the trial of course that's why i'm not saying to harm anybody what i'm saying is we we have we have the law we, have, we can look in the case law and all that stuff we have the law that we go by but the lord says you have to love all children enemies and foes friends and what where is that What, what is what is love according to the Bible? Do you know? In my opinion, or in bring it out. No, I mean according to the Bible. Like, what what does the Bible define as love? The Bible believes that all brothers and sisters are to be loved in the community of God, no matter if you're uh, gay, straight, uh, of a different creed, you know, socialist. Well, this or that. let me take it away from the gays for a minute, right? Okay. Let's just say. Okay, this is my brother right here, right? Of course. I love him. Yep. Right? I do too. Now let's just say he lost his mind and decided that he was going to shoot heroin into his veins. Right? Of course. Would you agree that's a bad idea? That's a bad idea. But okay. It's a good idea. No, well, it's a terrible idea. You should never shoot a heroin. Well, I wouldn't stop loving him. I didn't say stop loving him. Just walk with me on this. If he decided to do something like that and I saw him doing it, if I just saw him do it and was like, Ah, it's his business. I'm not going to say anything to him. Do you really think that I'd love him? Don't. If I love him, shouldn't I tell him, brother, you're shooting poison into your arms. You're harming yourself. Right. Ultimately, you're going to die from doing this. Right. You have to stop. Well, that's a, that's what I gave you as an, as an example. Exactly, and that's what I believe. And you cannot tell your friend, "Hey, brother, I love you, but this is not acceptable behavior." You can say that, but it doesn't mean he's going to stop because you said so. You're not the judge of jury. You are not the Lord. The Lord Himself is the only one that can say, "At the end of all paradise, when we reach that time, what is what?" Well, He already did say what is what. That's why we have the Bible. He gave us that, right? Listen. This is, this is gospel. All right, well, ch check this out. I'm going to have each of them read something real quick. I want, I want to see what you think. You got it? Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Okay, so the Bible says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, right? That is instructing judgment correct no, you all right brother <laughs> we'll be all right brother so 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 before before we go too far off of that right suffer which to live that means somebody who's guilty of witchcraft must be put to death not just not just generally wicked specifically a witch do you know what witchcraft is according to the Bible? Of course. Okay. That is the Lord's decision. Of course. Not by man's hand. He did make it. He said it in his Bible. He said that by his hand. It means no, no, no. It says, ye shall not suffer a witch to live. Meaning, I am not to allow a witch to continue to live. But I know where you're going. I know where you're going because because there's also speech about grace and mercy and things of this nature. I understand that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, and I'm going to agree with you here, at the end of the day, the Most High God is going to judge this witch, 
right? Because there, I mean, there's all kinds of sins that people commit, and there's only one thing that you can't repent from. Witchcraft is not that one thing. A witch can repent, right? So, but take this out though. If I see somebody who's practicing witchcraft or abusing drugs, which is essentially what it is. Essentially, that's your interpretation. That's not an interpretation because if I look up witchcraft, if I when I read witchcraft in the New Testament, it's ri it's written in Greek, right? The, the New Testament's written in Greek, right? Oh, okay. If I if I see the word witchcraft and I read it in Greek, the word is pharmakia. That's what what is a pharmacy? Okay. okay, that's the abuse of drugs, right? I'm not talking about medicine now. Medicine is fine. The Bible speaks about physicians and medicine but too. But water to wine is intoxicated. That's essentially what Jesus did. Yeah. What's the difference is that wine is commanded. We have to drink wine on Passover. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not an abuse of those okay. grapes. The same thing like if if I was if I was to, you know, have some kind of uh let's say I was shot and my guts were hanging out and you gave me a painkiller. That's a good time to use that. But if I'm just bored and I want to pop painkillers cuz I want to feel something, I don't need it. That's that's an abuse, right? That's that's that's, that's, the, that's the Bible. That's what you interpret from the Bible. That's not Okay. Gospel. Well, tell me how you interpret this. This is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So we're instructed not to hate our brothers, right? Thank you. Okay. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Do you know what, what does rebuke mean? Well, well, okay, so to deny. No, to correct. Rebuke is correct. We're not, if I deny my brother, then I, I'm casting him out. Well, I'm supposed to love him. It says, you shall not hate thy brother in thy heart. You shall rebuke thy neighbor, right? And not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin upon him. I cannot allow my brother to sin. So on the analogy that I gave, if my brother were to do something foolish, like engage in witchcraft and destroy his body with heroin, I cannot sit idly by and just allow him to do it. I have to warn him and tell him that it's wrong, why it's wrong, what's going to happen to him if he continues, and get him back on the right path. Now, if he doesn't listen to me, it's out of my hands, that's on him. But at least I said something, because the Bible told me to, right? So again, if I see a brother or a sister who's engaging in homosexuality, it is my duty to tell them that is wrong, they should not do it, they need to repent, if they say, hey, man, F you, I'm going to do what I want, all right, you go on about your life. I'm not going to chase you down and try to beat the gay out of you. I, I don't believe in that, right? So if you just want to do it anyway, then you're going to do it. But if you walk past me, you're going to hear about yourself because the Bible told me I have to say something. All right. Okay. Disagree? No. Okay. I'm sent by... Any kind of hate speech. Um, what did I say that was hateful? No, not you. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm, I'm, hear me out. Hear me uh, out. Okay. Me, with that. You spell go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm saddened by any hate speech. I'm saddened by what's depicted here because it hurts my feelings. It hurts me as a person. It hurts me as a parent. It hurts me as an adult. It hurts me as a father. And the great father, fine. Um, if you were standing here right now, do you honestly think that the Creator, the one and only, would allow children of his, his, his children to become homosexual, what, as uh, a choice? Do you think that they just aren't born that way? And maybe they, they had a, a dysfunction as you know, an upbringing or environmental or something. I, I think that he created all of this. Of course so it is. The options to do and have free will was what God gave us, and that was our, our biggest quality as being human, as God gave us free will. What you choose to do, if you choose to sin, that's your business. But you don't have to. You don't have to sin at all. You can choose not to. Shouldn't you choose not to? But you, you have free will. So the Lord gave you that option. The Lord said, you know, Cain and Abel, uh, Eve, 
they were given choices. They did what they did. We're humans. He didn't make us perfect. We're not all Superman. You know, we are God's children, and some choices people make may disagree with, but they are what they are. Well, the only reason I would disagree with them is because of what I read in the Bible. And the Bible is the Lord, and that's the word, and I agree with that. But I'm just saying certain interpretations of the Bible will change your faith entirely. And it's not fair, because if you read it verbatim, you're going to get a different view. And if you take interpretation and use your own thought process, because God gave you the choice to think for yourself, and that's what free will is all about. So if you choose to sin, that's your choice. So is it okay for me to choose to sin? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Maybe the free will on your own. Okay. So what you can do with that is your business. And if you choose not to sin, because every, we're all sinners. We're all going to make mistakes and everything. But the best thing you can do is protect those around you. Take care of your brothers and sisters. That's and what we're make doing. Make sure that everybody has a chance. Even those who, you know, whether you believe that homosexuality is something that came from birth, or whether you believe it's a choice. I believe it's an evil spirit. That's what I it believe it is. Be. Absolutely. But if... It, what you can't do is you can't hate. Why not? You can't, because, because the Lord teaches you to love. Does the Lord hate? No. The Lord doesn't hate? But no, the Lord does not hate. The Lord takes, he gives, and he does not hate. He doesn't hate? No. Okay, Lord, so if I if I read to you a Bible verse that says that he hates. The Lord is love. That's, that's how I interpret the Bible. The Lord is love. And hate is not any kind of sacrament, any kind of addendum to the Bible. I've never read anything in there in King James or... This is the King James. Right. That has said that the Lord smites unto brethren, whether they're agnostic or atheist or if they're of another function that doesn't represent the true treaty of the Bible. Because he loves all his children and that's the way I... Okay. That's, that's that's how I believe. And then my heart goes with Jesus. My heart goes with the Lord. And that's what I believe. And I've spoken enough about this. I'm interested your peek on things a little bit. I I love I love this kind of dialogue. I really do. I do too. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do. I, ju I just I just want to get your take on this that was written in the Book of Psalms. Oh sure. Right? Yeah. Psalms five and five. Right. Oh Psalm. Oh Psalm. This is Psalms chapter five verse five. The foolish shall not shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So when David was writing his psalm, a prayer to the Most High God, and said to God, Thou hatest, thou hatest all workers. Of iniquity, not just works of iniquity, the workers of iniquity. And the tyranny of evil men, right? Okay. So, does he hate workers of iniquity? I don't. I don't know that to be the case. I think that that's a little overreaching. Da so David was overreaching. Uh, I don't think David's the Lord. Well, David's not the Lord, but he was a man after the Lord's own heart. Doesn't the Bible say that? So am I. Are you? I am. Okay. Um, why do you say that? Because what separates me from David? Well, David was the king of Israel, of the tribe of Judah, God's chosen people, of the kingly tribe. Yeah. Are you an Israelite? Uh, no, I am Michael of Manhattan. Okay, Michael of Manhattan. son of Jesus I, I, I like your title, Michael of Manhattan. I like the alliteration. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, would you say that David was a man of God? Okay, check this out. Psalms, chapter 139, verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am I not, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? 
So David, his interpretation of the Lord's word is not the same thing as the Lord himself speaking. And if you know that, you would know that when you go to bed at night and you pray, that he speaks to you in a different language than what's interpreted in that book. No, I understand. But I, I asked you if you thought David was a man of God, because here David is saying yeah. that David hates these people. So so first God hates them, That's then David hates them. It's a sin to hate. Where is that a sin? It's a sin to hate. So David so David sinned in writing this song. isn't there and it falls away and turns to hate, it turns into something else. And it puts you into a place that's nowhere near the love of God because God is love and that is the truth. But God also hates. God does not hate. God okay. takes and he gives. Romans 9. Romans 9 and 13. Uh, I don't need, I already read this. Well, if you read this, you would know God hates. That's right. He does not hate. Okay. Well, I mean, this, this is as clear cut as it I can think of. This is a misinterpretation of the book. What, what you interpret it for me. I won't say anything. I want you to tell me what it means. You read it to me and I'll explain what I believe he was intending to say. It's all right. Romans 9. What was it Romans 9 and 13? Yeah, we do. Yeah, I need, I need verse 13. We'll get that in a minute. This is Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, so as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. All right, so what does that mean? Okay, good night. You have to interpret those words not by the Lord. So, so the interested. Bible is not the Word of God? Oh, the, it, oh, it's definitely the Word of God, but okay. they're not verbatim. They're not? They're not verbatim. Okay. These words were interpreted through other books. So the people had their own impression of what they felt through the Lord, and that's beautiful. It's a great thing, and I love it. But at the same time, you can't take it so strictly. You have to take your own inner self and your new the Lord. When you speak to the Lord at night, at night, what about you pray? When you pray during lunch or you pray during for four days. I pray without ceasing. Yeah, go ahead. You pray whatever you want. And sometimes it calls to you. In times you have no idea where it's coming from when you speak and you hear that voice. And you hear that. What that means to you is your interpretation and your David. You are Jacob. You are Luke. You are Mark. You are all of these folks that have every interpretation of whatever he puts into this book and this time and the references. And it all appeals to each person individually. And that's how it works. And no, I do not believe the Lord has hate in his heart. I don't think it's the, the Lord works that way. I think the Lord is love. And love is the only thing that matters and the only thing that's going to keep all of this in sync and when love goes away you'll have nothing you're going to have an absence of everything you're going to have an absence of truth of soul and of heart and on that note i must depart i enjoy well, but 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 you didn't tell me what that meant yet I, I i'm genuinely interested in in your in your interpretation of what romans 9 and 13 means if it says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. If it doesn't mean Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, then I'm, I'm really curious as to what it means. I, I think it means that um, you're human. It means I'm human? So God saying that he loves Jacob and hates Esau means that I'm human. I am human. I know that. It means you're human. Means you're human, but we're talking about human, God and who He loves and who He hates. I am you. We are all one and the same. Our hearts 
ideal divinity in separate ways. Well, we are all human and capable of mistakes. We are all capable of hatred. And the Lord gave us up a list of tests. These are tests right mm -hmm. here. These are instructions. So when those tests are given to us, we're allowed to look into them and interpret them the way they're spoken and the way that we feel. Well, shouldn't we be given instruction before we're tested? Wouldn't that make sense? So okay. there are there, there must be instructions in here. Of course. Okay. So let, let, let me extend an olive branch, right? Because the, the Bible does say that God is love. I would not dispute that, right? Yeah. So, but the Bible also just said that he loves Jacob and hates Esau. Right. So what if I did the same thing that you just did with Romans 9 and 13 with God is love and say, well, yeah, it says God is love, but, you know, a man wrote that. And we can't really take that for what it says because this is this guy's interpretation and how he accepted. See, because I can go to several places where it said God hates. But I You said hug a what? Grandparents. Oh, grandparent? Yeah. Anyway. Well, what if, okay, but well, your grandparents did this to my grandparents. That's right! Yes. So where's the love in that? The, my, actually, my grandparents were immigrants. Your, gra your yes. grandparents were immigrants from Ireland. Are you aware that the Irish had Haitian slaves? Bring it yes, out. I did. Bring you did know out. that? Okay, a lot of people don't know that. I That's good. That. I didn't know that. Okay. And uh, I, don't, I don't represent their... Uh, rep I don't represent nor do I support their decision making and that's what makes me an individual uh that's unique well I'm, I'm glad you don't support it I'm, I'm very i mean i don't i don't think that we would be able to have a cordial conversation if if you did uh, well at least make it more difficult but um i just want to read this real quick okay jeremiah 17 and 9 this is based on what you said that we can find this better in our own hearts than we can in the book right sure. jeremiah 17 and 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it and a great example of that is honestly this conversation that we've had because when i when we, when you brought up uh, homosexuals and i asked you about homosexuals according to what the bible says you skirted around what the bible said and said well you know they can still make their choice when you said that god is love and he doesn't hate we read what the bible said about god hating and two places and i could go to more but i, I know you got to go so i don't want to take up too much of your time the Bible says that he hates, but you said, I don't really feel like in my heart that he does. So when the Bible also says that the heart is desperately wicked, who can know it? Well, that was foolish. I don't know why. Why, why would you do that? I don't know why. Don't apologize to me. I'm not going to get hit by the car. <laughs> okay. First of all, hear me out on the homosexual thing. Okay. I, I am not a homosexual. I didn't accuse you of it. No, no, yeah. no. Okay. no I, I don't care. Okay. Uh, I am not homosexual, but uh, if I had a friend that was, I wouldn't hate that person. Would you tell him he was wrong, though? I don't believe in their practices. But um, would you tell him he's wrong, though? I might say I disagree with his choices, but he's a sinner, like we all are, and he can't look at me and say that everything that I smoke cigarettes. Like, that's it. Well, why would you do that? You know cigarettes give you cancer and it yeah. damages your body. Exactly. You know the Bible says, you know, that... Yep. Well... Yeah. yeah. I don't okay. know why. I okay. do it anyway. And it's but you thing. don't have to. You can just I stop. I don't have to. Of course. Yeah. It's not that easy. I'm just giving an example. Okay. Um, yes, I can tell my friend uh, I don't support what you're doing. I don't agree with it. That's fine. But it's not my place to say it. 
I think I get. I think I get what you're saying. You're talking about when um when Christ said, uh, you know, why why are you looking at the beam in your neighbor's eye when you have the moat mo or the moat in your neighbor's eye and the beam in yours? Okay, well I oh, I'll, I'll use myself, right? If I see my brother smoking or if I see my brother being a homosexual, I can tell him those things, and this person can't turn back around at me and say, well you smoke or well you do this or you do that because I read the Bible, I understand what it says. When I see the law say, don't do this, I don't do it. If the law says you must do this, I do that. The Bible tells us to be blameless, right? There are several people in the Bible that I can go to that the Bible specifically states verbatim were blameless. So this isn't an impossibility, right? So if I know, I never, I never did, you know, smoke cigarettes, but I've done other things in the past before I knew better. And once I knew better, I did better, right? So the same way, but, but when did you know that? When I read the Bible, not my heart. I read the Bible my whole life, and I still speak cigarettes. And sometimes, as we are all sinners, it just happens. Well, I I just demonstrated to you that I'm not a sinner. You are a sinner. Everyone's a sinner. I'm not a well. What sin am I committing? You, you're not a sinner. No. The the, the Bible verbatim Ooh, says we are all sinners. Can you prove that I'm a sinner? I hope so. You're human. You're a yeah. sinner. Was Abraham human? Well, Abraham didn't sin. Of course he did. No, he didn't. The Bible says that specifically. Give me a uh, prayer of Manasseh. No, 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 no. I got it. Go. <laughs> okay, I okay. Love the, I love the. I love All right, well, the, it was good talking to you, so Esau. Glad we met. Bless you. Know, you. Bless um, you. Your reading is great. I'm sure <laughs> you, live, you live around here? Uh, yeah, you, I live. You frequent this area? Well, I hang out. Well, I take care of the homeless sometimes. And, and well, that's good. Look after the folks, but I live up on uh, University of Greece. You don't feed them pork, do you? Pork? Are you feeding the homeless people pork? No, I actually I'm allergic to pork, oddly enough. Oh, well, that's <laughs> so that's lucky it. for you. That's. <laughs> I never have it in the home. Uh, okay. My son loves it, but he he's not a big pork fan. I just you know. Okay. Um, but anyway. Well, uh, either way, I, I was just gonna say, don't feed that to them. I usually just give them oranges and apples. And that's all good stuff. Yeah, um, well, look, we're, we're here every week, every Saturday. Um, it was a good discussion. Yeah, I'm glad. I love the man. Look, look forward to more. Just know that, you know, whatever I'm coming with is going to be coming out of here. All right. I don't follow my own heart. My, my, following my heart led me to dark places. This this brought me to the light. I'd love to uh, do this again. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Absolutely. I don't know where your friend went, but I'm sure he's waiting for you somewhere. Uh, I'm sure he's fine. It's probably not right. Okay. Right It's a Hold on. Uh, hold on. Were you still holding that up? Uh, you got it? Okay. Bring that out real quick. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That means what the Bible says is what the Bible said. That's right! If the Bible says that God hates, then God hates. If the Bible says that the East, that the white man is the devil, then the white man is the devil. That's right. If the Bible says never trust thy enemies, you better never trust your enemies. All right. And the Bible also says to be uh, uh, wise as a serpent or harmless as a dove, which is what you just saw right here. All right. Because it really doesn't make one uh, bit of difference one way or the other, whether or not he gets it if he's not an Israelite. So he can go on, well, he said he doesn't eat pork, but he can go on feeding his son pork, because his son's what he is. I'm not worried about his son, I was worried about the homeless. Because who are the homeless out here? Predominantly blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. This is, this is Issachar's land right here. This used to be considered Mexico here in, in Arizona. And they're the most disenfranchised and hunted people in Arizona. Oh, Issachar clearly has it worse in Arizona 
than Judah, Benjamin, Levi, who also have it bad. But I mean, there are specific laws on the books that state that a police officer can pull you over in the state of Arizona simply for having brown skin for the purposes of checking your legal status in this country. That is a law targeted squarely at my brother Issachar, who the world calls Mexicans, which is what we were talking about earlier. They'll set up their laws in accordance to what they see us do. Not just what's done in general. Right? This is Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Therefore the law is slack. And judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. See, and the wicked compass uh, um, uh, around the righteous, man. Who are the righteous? Who the Most High God made straight. All right? He made the white man crooked. There's no straightening that out. He has a question. You have a question, brother? Why is Israel attacking Palestinians? Why is Israel attacking Palestinians? That's, that's a good question. The reason Israel is attacking Palestinians is because Palestinians have inhabited that land for a long time. Since, since well, probably around the time we left. It's it, funny because Israel wasn't, wasn't a country or anything. It's still not considered a country. No, yeah, it's a nation state. And it was established in 1948 by the UN. Yeah, they, but, they but, took, but Palestinian was there before Israel. Exactly. Right. See, this is, this is something that white people do, whether they call themselves Jewish or not, right? They come into a place where they don't belong, where they weren't invited, they see people already there, and they kill them. It's the same thing they did when they came here. When they came yeah. here and they saw the, the so-called Mexican and the Native but, American, but they, they killed them they and took them out. They came here because of the Bible. They killed us, they killed my ancestors because of the Bible. That's why I don't, I don't believe in the Bible. You, you, you think they killed you because of the Bible? Yeah, they killed my ancestors because of the Bible. Except well, they didn't believe in the Bible, they actually got murdered. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I, I have a, a small correction to make, right? Get that sign right there. They, yes. No, no. That one. They came under the auspice of the um, initially the Catholic Church because it was under uh, the, the rule of Spain, right? Christopher Columbus yep. came by uh, the, the uh, decree of the... What, what was her name? Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, Queen Elizabeth of Spain, right? They did not teach the Bible. What they taught was that this guy was the Messiah and the Savior. The Bible doesn't say that this guy is the Messiah and the Savior. The Bible describes who the world calls Jesus Christ as a dark-skinned man with white woolly hair. What they did was they came with the image of one of the Pope's sons and said, this is your God, bow to him or die. And those of you that, that had the heart said, I will not bow and fought and died for your people like, like any good man would. And they did the same thing to us when they took us from the west coast of Africa and brought us over here. They said, bow to this image or die. Yeah, that's why I don't bow to no book. I don't consider a book sacred to me. Okay. I, be I believe my ancestors are the ones that actually fought and died for my, to, for me to be here. Mm -hmm. That's why I, that I don't even bow down because we don't bow down. Well, we're, not, we're not supposed to bow down to any man. And, and, it, and it was a great thing that your ancestors did in fighting back. Now, me, personally, I'm, I'm from the tribe of Levi, which most people would identify with uh, Haitians, right? Are you familiar with the Haitian Revolution at all? Yeah. See, and, and we did the same thing. These white people came in, and they took over, and we said, to hell with that, we're going to get torches and machetes, and we're going to kill as many white men as we possibly can and chase them off the island. And it's the same spirit that your ancestors had when they saw the conquistadors come in, and you guys said, to hell with this. We're going to kill all these white devils to the best of our ability. And that was the right spirit to have. And it's right? funny because 535 years later, mm -hmm. I'm still living. That's right. They haven't fucking killed. They haven't, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. They haven't killed all of us. And they right? can't. My and they never will. That my ancestors still live. My ancestors still live inside of me. And we're still fighting for that. We're still fighting for our freedom and our lands back. No, I mean, essentially, we are our ancestors, right? right. The spirits come back. Let me, yeah. can, I, can I ask you, um, 
What, what, uh... Tribe? Yeah, tribe. Mexica. Mexica. Oh. Are you, are you aware? Well, first of all, this brother right here is too, right? This is my, this is my very close and personal friend, my, my brother. Are you aware that Mexica is actually a, der a derivation of a Hebrew word? Have you ever heard that before? Nope. Meshika is directly related to the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means anointed. So when people say Christ, what they're doing is they're saying Christ that's uh, from Greek to English, because in the Greek it's Christos. But they got the idea for Christos, which means anointed, from the Hebrew word anointed, which was Mashiach. So when the Mexicans called themselves Meshika, what you were really doing is calling yourself anointed. Are you uh, another word would be uh, Azteca, right? Aztec. Aztec, right? Azteca is a Hebrew compound word. As meaning pertaining to time, and Teca meaning uh, an assembly of people. Now, is it a, or is it true that your tribe is world famous for being the most proficient and the wisest when it comes to reading the sun, moon, and stars yeah. and mapping things out, yeah. right? Absolutely, right? So you are the people that pertain to time. And this is something that we see in the Bible that's per that pertains to the tribe of Issachar, which is how we know that yeah, the tribe my, of Issachar my, came my, to... Yeah, my tribe, but yeah, you guys consider one God only. We don't. Mm -hmm. I understand. Don't, that. And that's why, that's why a lot of people killed us, because they said, oh, he's... They believe in the energy of war and the energy of the rain and the energy of this. And I still believe in them. I understand. I but understand. A lot of people say, "Oh, I'm I'm Gemini, I'm Pisces, I'm this." Well, my, actually, mine is Tlaloc. Tlaloc is the energy of the rain, of the uh, the thunder, and all that. I understand that. I understand that. And, so, the, and yeah. there's a spirit behind everything. Yeah. But what our people end up doing is we end up worshiping these things that we see, right? Now, my I, I just made mention to Haiti a minute ago, right? So my people, we also did the same thing. With, with the with the voodoo religion we had all these different um what they call uh, loas which are different kind of lesser gods right yeah we, yeah. Don't, we, we don't consider none of our uh, none of the spirits lesser i understand but what, what i'm saying is in in the voodoo religion there's a supreme and then there's other gods that are also uh worshipped and venerated and and uh, called to, yeah, so and the and the voodoo religion that, directly that, mimics the the Hebrew priesthood. That's why I don't I don't consider the Bible to be a religious thing to me. It's I not. I haven't gone to church in over fifteen years. And I applaud you for that because the church is a whorehouse. You should stay yeah, out of it. They they just go in there to steal your money. Exactly. Why is it that the priests, the priest sons, and their wives that they're not supposed to get be married have? A freaking million dollar house, Mercedes, all that, and yet the people that they really need the money are on the streets. Yeah, because they're taking that money from those people that need it, and it's horrible. They should never do that. And the, yeah, the, so that's, I, since I turned 15, I told my mom, I'm like, you know what, I ain't going to church no more. She's like, why? Because I don't, I don't believe in that. That's good. I'm like, my heart is actually with my ancestors. My heart's still with them. I'm like, 500 plus years later, what has their church done for me? What my people have done for me is, when I was down, they actually picked me up. Yeah. Because I actually go to a organization that not only shows us where I come from, also shows us our prayers. And our prayers is not bowing down to nobody. Our prayers is actually dancing. It's um, danza. Yeah, and absolutely. That's how, and when I was down, I actually told them, I need help. And I, we went to the church. The church literally looked at us and turned around and, oh, you're not, you're not Catholic. You're not Christian. All right, whatever. Turned around. So I had to be their religion for us, for them to help me. Yeah, and that's and that's not right. My the organization, I'm a volunteer there. They actually don't don't look at you. If you need help, you'll go with them. And be like, hey, I need help. They'll try the best. We also fight for immigrant rights, for LGBTQ rights, for any any right that there is. We'll we'll actually help them out. We've gone to marches with the LGBTQ community. 
with the immigration immigrant community. Well, as far as the LGBTQ thing, right? In your ancestors, correct? Yeah. Do you think that they um, made practice of same-sex relationships? Nope, but you know what? I don't... Hold on. I don't condone them. I have a lot of friends that are from the L LGBT community, and I'm not going to say just because they're, they're that, their sexual... Rela uh, has they like they like that mm -hmm. that's up to them oh of course it's up to them me, i understand that. personally mm -hmm. i'll back them up if they're one of my good friends i'll back them up and i still do even with my my ancestors being the way they were i'll still back them up 100 percent. i gone to marches with the lgbt community i've gone to marches with the immigration community i've gone to marches with the um native Amer uh, native american with um, African Americans. Why? Because that's who we are and that's who we represent. I represent the people. Mm -hmm. You can be straight, gay, lesbian, whatever. That's how who I am. So I know where we, I know where you're gonna go, mm. and I'm not gonna go there because it's okay. gonna be another. All right. <laughs> that's all right. Well, you know, I hope you stay safe out there, and I'll just say this in, in parting. If our people. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who are our people, That's right. engage in homosexuality. I still love the individual. I do. But I would hate to even halfway, even halfway condone it. Because if that cancer spreads, that is the end of our people. That's right. I will never march in an LGBTQ march. It's not going to happen because I don't support it. Does that mean I think that we should go and beat these people down? No, not saying that. I just, well, sister, before you go, did you have a question? No? no. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll come back by. All right. Your subject matter. I can change the subject matter right now. Oh, no, no. Okay. I, I'm not judging, you know, I just. If, if, it, if it makes you uncomfortable and you want to talk, I, I want to make you comfortable. I don't, I don't, I don't want to chase you off. I, I, it's just because he brought it up, I started talking about it. Okay, okay. I'm not uncomfortable, I'm just gonna come back. Okay, all right. All right, you be safe. What's that? Okay, okay. That's all right. That's all right. Short thing. Short thing. Because, you know, I, I understand that brother's reservations against the Bible. I had similar uh, reservations for similar reasons. And then I realized that the problems that I thought I had with the Bible are actually problems that I had with the church. Because the church does not preach the Bible. They never have. And you wouldn't know it until you go into it and see it for yourself. Because it was at the church that I learned that I was supposed to be tolerant of everybody's religion and tolerant of everybody's way of life and just accept everything as it is and come as you are and leave as you came and all that stuff. Well, you come as you are, but once you leave out of here, you need to change some things. You're not gonna come to me as a drug dealing gang member and leave here thinking that it's okay to be a drug dealing gang member. It's just not gonna happen. I will show you yourself. You're gonna put this mirror up in front of you and you're gonna have to see it. You can deny it. You can leave and, and ignore it. But you can't say you didn't know because you would have been told. If every man dropped his woman and got with another man and every woman dropped her man and got with another woman, that'd be the end of us. I'm not supporting anything that could potentially end us as a people. Not at all. It's never going to happen. If every one of us sold drugs to our brothers and sisters and did drugs ourselves, that would be the end of us. And I don't want to end us. I want us to rise above everything. I want us to be the principal people on the earth once again, just like we were when King David reigned. Just like we were when King Solomon reigned. Just like we will be. When Hamashiach Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, 
comes here, destroys the goddamn white man, and sets up his righteous kingdom with us on top. This is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the proofs of instruction are the way of life. So the law is a commandment, or the law is a lamp, and the commandment is a light, and the proof of instruction is the way of life. So if you're not reproving people and instructing people according to this commandment and law, then what you're preaching is the way of death. What is the way of death? Abusing drugs, that's death. Abusing your, uh, your, yourself with mankind, which is homosexuality, that's death. And I don't want death for my people. If the so-called white man wants to be a homosexual and, a, and, and commit bestiality, look, that's his damn business. I feel sorry for them beasts. I'll never feel sorry for the goddamn white man. There's nothing you can tell me to make me feel sorry for him. And, that, and just like that white man that came up here earlier, that had something to say about everything we read, but couldn't disprove anything, couldn't gainsay anything, this is what the Bible has to say about that. Luke chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. So, so he said he will give us a mouth and wisdom. Which what? which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So our adversaries would never be able to gainsay nor resist, which is why he was getting frustrated the more and more the Bible was coming out. So the more and more the Bible came out, the more agitated he got. Now, he kept his composure pretty well, but you could see it in his face. He was getting upset. Because for everything that he would say, there was an answer for in the Bible. Because you see, the Bible is perfect. The Bible is absolutely perfect. When the Bible says, this is not what you're supposed to do, not only is it going to say it again someplace else, but it's also going to give you reasons why. It's going to give you reasons why you should do certain things, or must do certain things, rather. And if you don't speak according to those words, the problem is you. Your heart is wicked, not the Bible. Read on. This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So to the law and to the testimony. That's the Torah, that's the Tanakh, the prophets, the gospel. All this is testimony. Everything Christ said was law. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there was no light in them. Why is there no light in them? Because the law and the commandment is a, a lamp and a light. So if you don't have light, you're in darkness. That's what you get when you go to the damn Christian church, to the damn Catholic church, the Muslim mosque, so on and so forth. You'll get nothing out of there but more darkness. A lot of our brothers realize that Christianity is a bunch of nonsense. Find out about Islam and say, okay, so that Christian stuff was white people stuff, but here's this, uh, this Islam, this sounds better, still darkness. Islam is garbage. The Quran is good only for Kindle. And the Christian church, well, that's not good for anything. Unless you want your children to continue to get raped. This is Proverbs chapter 31, verse 9. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. So wait a minute. That white man said that nobody can judge anybody. Read that again. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. And plead the cause of the poor and needy. And this is what we're doing. We come out here and we plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who are the poor and needy? 
the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who God called Israel, his chosen, his beloved, his elect. That's who we out here for. And you see, brothers get their mind all twisted and turned against this Bible, and they think, that doesn't belong to me, when in fact it does. I gave them a few, you know, a few uh, grains of truth in between what he was saying. I didn't want to cut him off too much because I don't want him to feel like I'm just shouting him down. Because I want him to come in. I don't want him to be chased out. But the problem is, when you go according to how you feel, now, first of all, he said the motivation was learning who, you know, learning about his ancestors and how his ancestors did things and how his ancestors looked at things. Then he turned right around and said that he goes to LGBT community marches. I never heard of a single Mexica or a single Azteca, warrior, prince, king, nothing, that upheld the disgusting values of the LGBT community, not one. But you know why? Because it's not their culture. It's Greek culture. That's right. Women for procreation and boys for pleasure, it's sick. And that same spirit exists in every single white man, woman, and child. And, I, and look, this is a message to all the sisters out there. If you were stupid enough to marry a white man, first of all, repent. And, be, and, and come out of that madness so that you can be forgiven. But if you made such a foolish mistake and think for a second that you want to continue on with that, count the days. You are going to come home one day and find your man bent over in front of the neighbor. It's going to happen. And if it's not the neighbor, it'll be his co-worker. If it's not his co-worker, it'll be your family dog. Save the dogs, man. That's right. I've been, yeah, we should make that a hashtag. Save the dogs, man. Look, I'm not even a dog person like that, but no animal deserves that. Keep all canines away from crackers and gooks everywhere. Right. And reptiles. <laughs> and rodents, since we're speaking yeah. about, about the homosexual white man. All right? Keep all these four-legged beasts who, who deserve so much better away from white people and Asian people because all they're going to do is have sex with them and eat them. That's what they've been doing for ages. You know, we come out and we say this every week and I never get any opposition. <laughs> I'm just waiting for one white man to be like, hey, wait, wait a minute, we don't do that. Yeah, Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You do it. You know you do it. We know you do it. That's right. God knows you do it. You ever seen the sad look of a dog in the dog's eyes <laughs> when you see him being walked by an Edomite? I saw an Edomite woman with a tattoo on her arm. I said, what does that say? Because I couldn't read it. And she said, oh, that's my dog's name. I'm sorry. Anybody that would take it that far, the tattoo their dog's name on their forearm. I got to question what kind of relationship they had with that beast. <laughs> Let's get back to this uh, article. You still got that open? Because don't forget, this white man that you trust so much has shut down his services for you to call for his help. 911 currently does not work. Or at least as far as up until we started this camp. I haven't been checking the news since we started this today. But over the last 48 hours, it has not been working. And you walk around here feeling safe. You're all in your security. Let my outside start sounding like your outside. Either sitting at home watching Netflix and Grey's Anatomy or whatever the hell you white people watch. You start hearing pop, pop, pop outside. Some glass breaking outside. I, I wish I could see the look on your face when you call 911 and get that doo -doo -doo. I'm sorry, but the number you have called. Go ahead, brother. The Federal Communications Commission's 
has launched an investigation into a phone and internet outage that disrupted 911 services across the country starting Thursday. Starting Thursday, 911 services across the country have been down. And they claim that they're investigating themselves. I don't know if I believe that very much, but keep reading. The telecommunications giant CenturyLink, based in Monroe, Louisiana, says the outage began at 8.18 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. The website Down Detector says it primarily affected western states, but emergency service providers on both coasts reported disruptions. See, and they just said that it primarily affected the, the western states, but there were reports that it affected both coasts. I first heard about this from my cousin in Massachusetts. We posted on Facebook, she said, why is it 911 working? You know why 911 isn't working? Because this kingdom has to fall. The white man is not going to rule forever. I mean, yeah. I sound so reluctant, brother. Be proud of it, man. Be proud of your ancestors and your history, man. You come from a powerful group of people, brother. Yeah, I know, I know. He's walking his dog today. I get it. But we're not talking about her. We're talking to him. He's the king in this earth. That's right. Hugging a peasant. All right? And I'm sure he's got some Hispanic sisters that he's done growing up with that are a million times finer than that white girl he's got. That's right. That are a million times more suitable for him, that would understand his struggle, speak his language, and I'm just using that figuratively, not because, you know, he might speak Spanish or anything like that, but can relate to him. A white woman don't give a goddamn about you. That's right. She just with you because she hate her dad. <laughs> Bring that out. Tell me I'm lying. What up? Y'all up for now, but you're going down soon. Don't you worry about it. Oh, no. Uh, no, you don't think so? Hey, you didn't think Rome was going to fall either. Then look at you. You're too busy molesting little boys, and then you got taken over. Give, give, give me what you got. Because, see, we shouldn't be alarmed at the fact that 911 services are down, all right? We're not supposed to be dealing with them any goddamn way. Right. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Does the Bible not call this place spiritually Egypt? We're not supposed to go to our enemies. We're not supposed to go to our slave masters for help. and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not unto the holy one of israel neither seek the lord yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call against the against the house of the evil doers and it gets the help of them that work iniquity. So we're not supposed to trust in these people. We're not supposed to look at them and say, oh, look, what a great army they have. Look how organized they are with their blue suits and their badges, their SWAT teams and their cars. Look how powerful that looks. That's not power. That's little man syndrome. I was going to say something else, but I was instructed not to use certain language for a little while. So I'm just going to say little man. You know what I'm talking about. Keep reading. Yet, oh, slut. Now, now, the Egyptians are men. So these Egyptians are men. These white men are men. Read on. And not God. And their horses flesh. And not spirit. When the, when the Lord shall stretch, stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is helping shall fall down. 
and they all shall fail together. You see, because these people that you look up to, they're not God. They're just people that are on top right now. The Egyptians were on top at one time. Now look at them. They ain't been great in, what, 3,000 years? It's a wasteland. It's a desert now. It's one big museum. That's what Egypt is now. One big museum run by people that weren't there when all those things were built. Those damn Arabs are not Egyptian. Don't be stupid. Just like these crackers on their scooters are not Native Americans, man. Like people get displaced all the time. You see? So, so we, we shouldn't trust in them. We shouldn't look to them for help because our help isn't supposed to come from them. Our help is supposed to come from the Most High God. And that's what we're waiting on. And we don't just sit and wait idly by like some foolish Christian. We do something about it. We come out here week in and week out and tell our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, it's time to wake the hell up. Right. It's time to keep these last statutes of commandments. You've been following these damn devils too long. And it ain't done a goddamn thing for you. Just like my Issacharite brother said there a minute ago who don't realize that he's Issachar, over over four or five hundred years, what has the church done for us? Nothing. That's the answer to that. It's never done anything for us, and it never will. It wasn't designed to. That's not its purpose. That's like looking at my toothbrush and saying, when has this ever, when has this ever fixed my car? That's not what it's for. Read what you got. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. So we're not supposed to envy our oppressor, and we're damn sure not supposed to choose any of his ways. We read that earlier in Jeremiah 10. We said, learn not the ways of the heathen. Those are the ways of the heathen. Stop going to that goddamn church. They never read you more than 10 scriptures within a month. And I'm being generous. You probably ain't heard more than 10 Bible verses in your stupid church in the whole year. They read what they read John 3:16, they do a song and dance. You pay some money and you go home. You go home, you go right back to being an adulterer, you go right back to being a drug abuser. 